The Shroud of Turin is one of the most debated and mysterious artifacts in history. For centuries, it has captured the imagination of believers, skeptics, and scientists alike. Said to be the burial cloth of Jesus Christ, it bears a faint image of a man who appears to have suffered wounds similar to those described in the crucifixion. However, in the modern era, scientific methods like carbon dating have been used to challenge its authenticity. The results and their implications sparked a global debate that continues to this day. Understanding Carbon Dating and Its Role Before delving into the shroud of Turin's carbon dating controversy, it is important to understand what carbon dating is and how it works. Carbon dating, also known as radiocarbon dating, is a scientific method used to determine the age of an artifact or sample that contains organic material. Developed by Dr. Willard Libby in the late 1940s, it has become an essential tool for archaeologists and historians. The technique works by measuring the amount of carbon-14 in a sample. Carbon-14 is a radioactive isotope of carbon that is present in all living organisms. While an organism is alive, it continuously absorbs carbon-14 from the atmosphere. However, once it dies, the absorption stops, and the carbon-14 begins to decay at a known rate. By measuring the remaining amount of carbon-14 in a sample, scientists can estimate its age. Although carbon dating is an invaluable tool, it is not without its limitations. It is most effective on samples that are less than 50,000 years old. Older samples may have so little carbon, 14 remaining that accurate measurements are difficult. Additionally, contamination or mishandling of samples can lead to skewed results. With this in mind, the carbon dating of the Shroud of Turin was always going to be a sensitive and highly scrutinized endeavor. The 1988 Carbon Dating Test A Turning Point The modern controversy surrounding the Shroud of Turin came to a head in 1988 when carbon dating tests were conducted. For decades, the Shroud had been revered as a holy relic, but skeptics called for scientific analysis to determine its authenticity. In response to growing interest, the Catholic Church authorized a carbon dating test to establish its age. Three independent laboratories were selected to perform the tests, the University of Arizona, Oxford University, and the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich. To ensure impartiality and reliability, each laboratory received a small sample of cloth taken from the shroud. The samples were carefully sealed and sent to the laboratories without any identifying information to prevent bias. After months of testing, the results were announced on October 13, 1988. All three laboratories reached a similar conclusion. The Shroud of Turin dated to between 1260 and 1390 AD. This meant that the Shroud was not a 2,000-year-old relic, but rather a medieval artifact. For many, this was a devastating blow to the Shroud's authenticity. The results sparked a media frenzy and divided public opinion. Skeptics hailed the carbon dating test as definitive proof that the Shroud was a medieval forgery. They argued that the image on the Shroud could not be evidence of Jesus Christ's crucifixion since the cloth itself was not old enough. For believers, however, the results were met with skepticism and disappointment. Many refused to accept the findings claiming that the carbon dating test was flawed or incomplete. Criticisms of the carbon dating results Despite the confidence with which the carbon dating results were announced, they were not without controversy. Critics of the 1988 test raised several concerns about the accuracy and reliability of the findings. 1. Contamination of the samples one of the primary criticisms of the carbon dating results is the possibility of contamination. The Shroud of Turin has a long and complex history, having been handled, displayed, and even exposed to fire over the centuries. It is believed that the Shroud may have absorbed contaminants, such as smoke, oil, and biological material, which could have skewed the carbon dating results. In particular, the 1532 fire in Chambery, France, is often cited as a significant event that could have altered the composition of the shroud. During the fire, the shroud was partially burned and doused with water to extinguish the flames. Critics argue that the carbon-14 content of the shroud may have been affected by this event, resulting in an inaccurate date. 2. 
sample location, and representativeness. Another major concern is the location from which the samples were taken. In 1988, the carbon dating test used samples taken from a single corner of the shroud. Critics argue that this corner may not be representative of the entire cloth. Some researchers believe that the corner used for testing may have been a repaired section of the shroud, woven with newer material in the medieval period. In 2005, a chemist named Dr. Raymond Rogers conducted a separate analysis of the shroud's fibers. His findings suggested that the section used for carbon dating contained cotton fibers that were not present in other parts of the cloth. Rogers argued that the samples taken in 1988 were not from the original shroud, but from a medieval repair patch. If true, this would explain why the carbon dating test produced a medieval date. 3. Microbial activity. Microbial activity is another factor that may have influenced the carbon dating results. Over time, bacteria, fungi, and other microorganisms can grow on organic materials like cloth. These microorganisms can introduce new carbon, 14 into the sample, leading to inaccurate dating. Some researchers have suggested that the shroud's long history of exposure to varying environmental conditions may have resulted in significant microbial contamination. If this contamination was not properly accounted for during the 1988 carbon dating test, it could have caused the shroud to appear much younger than it actually is. 4. The Role of Bias and Interpretation Critics of the carbon dating test also point to the role of bias in scientific interpretation. While the laboratories involved in the 1988 test were respected and independent, some argue that there was an underlying assumption that the shroud was a medieval artifact. This assumption may have influenced the way the results were interpreted and presented. Additionally, the media's portrayal of the carbon dating results may have amplified their perceived finality. Many news outlets reported the findings as conclusive proof that the shroud was a forgery, leaving little room for alternative interpretations or further investigation. Alternative Interpretations and Scientific Theories In the years since the 1988 carbon dating test, several alternative interpretations and scientific theories have emerged to explain the shroud's mysterious nature. While these theories do not all agree on the shroud's origins, they offer intriguing possibilities that challenge the carbon dating results. 1. The Image Formation Process One of the most enduring mysteries of the Shroud of Turin is the process by which the image was formed. The faint, almost photographic image of a man on the cloth has baffled scientists for decades. Unlike paintings or drawings, the image on the shroud appears to be a superficial discoloration of the fibers, with no evidence of pigment or brush strokes. Some researchers believe that the image could have been created through a natural process, such as chemical reactions or exposure to radiation. In particular, the hypothesis of a flash of light during the resurrection of Jesus Christ has been proposed as a possible explanation. This theory suggests that the intense burst of energy during the resurrection could have imprinted the image onto the shroud. 2. New Dating Techniques In recent years, advancements in scientific dating methods have opened new possibilities for analyzing the Shroud of Turin. Techniques such as Fourier Transform Infrared Spectroscopy FDIR, and Raman Spectroscopy have been used to study the chemical composition of ancient artifacts. Some researchers believe that these methods could provide more accurate and reliable dates for the shroud, free from the limitations of carbon dating. In 2013, a study conducted by scientists at the University of Padua in Italy used these alternative techniques to date the shroud to between 300 BC and 400 AD. While this study has been met with skepticism, it highlights the ongoing efforts to revisit the dating of the shroud using modern technology. 3. Historical Evidence In addition to scientific theories, historical evidence has also been used to support the authenticity of the Shroud of Turin. Proponents of the Shroud argue that its existence can be traced back to the early centuries of Christianity, long before the medieval period suggested by the carbon dating results. For example, some researchers point to references in ancient texts and artwork that depict a cloth bearing the image of Christ. The Mandelion of Edessa, a legendary cloth said to bear the face of Jesus, is often cited as a possible precursor to the Shroud of Turin. Additionally, 
Byzantine art from the 6th and 7th centuries features depictions of Christ that bear a striking resemblance to the image on the shroud. The Shroud Today – Faith vs. Science The debate over the Shroud of Turin continues to this day, with faith and science often standing in opposition. For believers, the Shroud remains a sacred relic that provides a tangible connection to the life and death of Jesus Christ. For skeptics, it is a fascinating artifact that offers insight into medieval craftsmanship and the power of religious symbolism. Despite the controversy, the Shroud of Turin remains an enduring mystery. Whether it is the burial cloth of Jesus or a medieval creation, its impact on history, science and faith cannot be denied. The carbon dating results of 1988 may have cast doubt on its authenticity, but the questions surrounding the Shroud are far from settled. Conclusion the quest for answers. The story of the Shroud of Turin is a testament to humanity's quest for answers. It is a story that bridges the gap between science, history, and faith, challenging us to question what we know and how we know it. The carbon dating test of 1988 was a turning point, but it was not the final chapter. New evidence, alternative theories, and advancements in technology continue to shape our understanding of this enigmatic artifact. In the end, the Shroud of Turin remains a symbol of mystery and wonder. Whether it is a divine relic or a product of human ingenuity, it invites us to explore the complexities of belief, evidence, and the search for truth. The debate over the Shroud's authenticity may never be fully resolved, but its significance as a cultural and spiritual icon will endure for generations to come.